I've met uh, an old acquaintance of yours, um, Jerry Harrison, uh, and bumped into him a couple of times uh, and told him how much Talking Heads meant to me, uh, meant so much to me. Thank you. And I have a, a very clear, crystal clear memory of, it would have been, I want to say maybe 1983, 84, somewhere around there. I'm in college. And of, of course, I'm obsessed with Late Night with David Letterman. And he has you guys on and you play Burning Down the House on Letterman. And it was my whole world of things that I loved coming together <laughs> in one moment, which rarely happened mm -hmm. when you're at, at that phase. It was so There was much less entertainment back then. So the fact that I remembered, I think Dave chatted with you uh, a bit. You you came over for, to the interview chair either before or after the song, and he was talking to you. And I thought this is everything I like in life in one place at the same time. I remember. Uh, well, I've seen kind of re replays of that chat. It seemed like a very. Uh, it was a very odd chat. It was. Um, I was very nervous, um, and. They were fairly stilted answers, but I don't think I remember watching it and having no judgment about it, which is just that's you. This is Dave. I don't, you know, this this is what's happening at this moment. Mm -hmm. I loved the performance uh, of the song, Thank you know, you. and uh, you know, so fascinated by, you know, talking about the beginnings of that band. I never realized until recently that. Psycho Killer, which is the first big hit, was the only the second song you had ever written. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of an experiment to see can I can I really write a song? Wow, I got help from some of the others, uh, but I, we did, and people seemed to like that one. Yeah, and then I thought, <laughs> oh, it also sounded so different uh, uh, from anything else at the time to me. It just was so. It was. Um, and, and, and I know that you were trying to, I read an interview once where you said in Psycho Killer, you were trying to, um, almost as a thought experiment saying, what if Alice Cooper and Randy Newman wrote a song together? Exactly, yes. And I'm like, what, what a fantastic, first of all, who approaches songwriting with that kind of idea? <laughs> I liked them both. Yeah. I thought, well, you know, you like it both, both, both. it's like cooking. Put them together. <laughs> I like onions. Yeah. I like ice cream. <laughs> they must together. be good together. <laughs> yes. uh, did you? Um, I'm curious. You so you wrote that song, and things start to take off, and then you just have this phenomenal success. And I, I think the rare thing that you guys pulled off was the group was very commercially successful it was the soundtrack for a lot of people of late 70s early 80s but also very highly regarded and respected at the same time which doesn't always happen it doesn't always happen um we were kind of determined to do what we did mm -hmm. but i think we were also pretty lucky at the be around at that time where that kind of thing was accepted there's a certain amount of luck involved yeah I like it when people acknowledge luck. I mean, yeah. We were in the, back at CBGB's. We were kind of in the right place at the right time. Other bands were playing. People were coming to see them. Record companies coming to see them. Um, we didn't plan that. Hey, Sona, think of all the amazing things in life that are expressions of just you. Yeah. I mean, like the chocolate that you had on your face when you came in because you just ate that. What was it you were eating? I was eating a giant cookie. Giant cookie. Yeah. And that's so Sona. <laughs> okay. Or that song you stream <laughs> over and over again. It's yeah. just so you. What's that song for you? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Yeah. And it's for my boys, not me. I know. Me. Still, it's nice. Okay. Or, you know, that podcast, that comedy podcast you just got to listen to. Yeah, Conan O'Brien needs a friend. Exactly. Is that what you listen to in your spare time? <laughs> yeah. I love it. Everything that makes you you makes all the difference. State Farm believes insurance should work the same way. Your plan, your coverage selections can be personalized by you and only you. Cool. I shouldn't shout, but this is how strongly I feel about it. <laughs> you got so aggressive. The ability to choose the plan you want by picking the options that fit you, like choosing to bundle your home and auto policies, <laughs> is what the State Farm Personal Price Plan is all about. Getting the coverage you want at an affordable price just for you. Call or go to statefarm.com today to create your State Farm Personal Price Plan. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customers. Availability and eligibility 
may vary. Do you ever think to yourself, I do in comedy and think, what if I was starting now? What I, would you do? What would you do? I, what would I do if I started now? How would I, because there's so much out there, how would I, how would I make it? And I'm not sure that I would. Um, I'm, there I'm is, very yes, lucky that so I- so much. Yeah. There's a lot of music out there too. Yes, yeah. Um, the streaming services and, every, and everywhere are just filled, filled, filled with music. And you wonder how, the, I still find lots of things that I like, but I can imagine for a lot of people, it's like, well, it's just too much. Right. I think that your people are overwhelmed and then they get siloed. I just want to listen to these three. It's You're not, uh, just as in news, you don't have to hear an opinion you don't want to hear anymore because you can just watch mm -hmm. your, the same thing is happening, I think, in music and in comedy. You can just seek out, these are the seven things that give me comfort and you will not run into anything that might challenge you, yes. which is kind of scary. Uh -huh. It makes you think, uh, I mean, at, at that time, um, when you're, th there's such a nice evolution too with your, with your band with Talking Heads that the music kept evolving. It didn't, it felt like, um, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, there was a determination to not do the same thing twice. Exactly. And, and I'd grown up uh, as a music fan in the late 60s, early 70s. Who did you like? Oh, I, you know, I liked The Temptations and mm -hmm. James Brown and The Beatles and The Rolling Stones and The Who and, you know, all, every, all these acts that were around. And a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them would change from album to album. They'd evolve yeah. and do different things and try these odd, adding these odd sounds and odd ideas into their songs. And I thought, that's what you do. You can get away with it. Yeah. yeah and look, they're successful. And so I thought... Well, okay, if they can do it, that's the that's the that, that's the way to go. If you can get it, get away with it. Was there pressure after Psycho Killer from record label to say like that was great, do that again? Because you didn't. <laughs> didn't. But, uh, there was probably pressure after some other things, like maybe maybe when we did some successful tours or something like that. It was more like that's good. You're doing good. Just stay on the road. Yep. And that can be fun, but kind of deadly after a while. Yeah. Uh, famously, The Road. It, <laughs> um, it, in my limited experience with it, it is thrilling for, a while, for just a little while. And then you see, you understand why people become addicts and alcoholics, <laughs> yes. you know, and because uh, you're on a bus. And yeah. uh, you're you're t really amped up after a show, and you want to come down from after a show, and then it's time to get on a bus, and it's it's not a good rhythm to live in consistently. Yeah, you just watch some movies and start drinking. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I do that now, but I'm not even touring. So this is. <laughs> I'm realizing now this is an intervention they've called into. <laughs> I've got no. 